In this fourth video, we're looking at routing. So with the routing, we deal with both the incoming and outgoing signals. The incoming signals into your channels are dealt with on this input page, and that deals with channels 1 through 32 in banks of 8 and our auxiliaries in. So we can set these to be whatever we would like. So currently I've got them set up to local. Because this is a compact, you'll notice that the local 17 through 24 and 25 through 32 are in brackets because they are not available. Just gives me an indication that if I select that I'm being an idiot. So I could set these to be the digital stage boxes. So the digital stage boxes, AES 50 deals with any of the Behringer or Midas stage boxes which are linked together and come in to AES 50 port A. And then we have B, which is AES 50 B, with a designation any of those digital stage boxes linked together coming into port B. Then we have the opportunity to have card coming in. So that is the USB card, which is the standard removable card, which comes with the unit when you first get it. And then we have user. This is the new thing for firmware 4.0. And that is a direct link to patch points, which is over here. So once we've set our inputs we can have a look at our outputs so our main outputs if we're looking from the board come from xlr so on the back of this board we've got eight outs so we can set those wherever we'd like them to be these work in banks of four you see we've got an opportunity to locally patch so if we click that it will take us through to patch points we also have the ability to route a digital stage boxes through the ports AES 50A and AES 50B. These are identical in their options, um, but it depends on which point, which port you are connecting to on the rear of the unit. So with the card. These are our outputs from the USB, so I know some users who receive dry audio in from their door and then they process it in the desk and then they send it back out to new channels in their door treated and then they record that. That gives you an opportunity to create live mixes if you want to or you can create or you can use the inbuilt effects and signal chain that exists within the desk. So if we go to patch points, this designates what our patch points are doing. So for our outs, output one, um, well we'll deal with outputs one through nine, or sorry, uh, one through eight. I have the first six set up as mixed buses, and then I've got main left, main right. I can set the out signal on these to be the input signal, pre-EQ, post-EQ, pre-fader or post-fader. So, for example, my main left and right sets post-fader, and actually, cleverly, I've set all of my mixed buses as post fader as well. So we also have the opportunity to delay our outs. So if we're dealing with multiple speakers spaced around a room, say if you're in a conference and it's quite a big room and you have many seats or it's quite an awkward space and you need to put in um, say six or seven different PA speakers just to deal with the amount of people or the room that you're in, you can set a delay from the main front PA, which will allow you to deal with any delays, any 
audible delays that you hear in the room. I've been at a number of conferences where they haven't done this properly and it's like listening to Rockabilly all day. It's horrible. So we also have our auxiliary outs. So this is the quarter reach outs on the back and then we also have the AES EBU which is a the ability to send two channels of audio over XLR. Bear in mind the XLR cable has to be rated um, at 110 ohms impedance or 100 ohms impedance, I can't remember which, but it's more than a standard mic cable, so you have to shell out the money for that. This gives you the ability to send to outboard or you can send um, your AES to main, front, left, right, if you so desire. Then we have the P16s. So this is the personal monitoring units, which are connected to the ultranet port on the back of the unit. So you can actually designate what, oh, sorry, I went to IQ. You can actually designate where these channels are coming from I can select that one so select channel select channel select channel yeah select channel 2 you can actually set exactly where it's coming from so you can have say your first channel could just be a drum mix or you could have um, if you work like Dave Rapp, for example, who mixes chili peppers, you could have your kick and snare grouped as a mix bus. Then you can have your toms grouped as a mix bus and then all of the metal stuff as another mix bus. And they could be coming in as your three channels. And you can set those to be, again, the input pre-EQ, post-EQ, pre-fader, post-fader. There is also the opportunity to deal with the IQ stuff. This is another external system. I'm not going to go into that now because I don't know enough about it. And then the, the new cool thing is the user patching. So we can look at the user patching. So of the inputs, we can change any of the pa any of the routing from the desk to wherever we want it to go. So if we've got a standard setup, we can move mix buses next to um, groups of faders that we've created. We can move matrices around. We can do whatever we want to do. So you can set your input. So for example, if I wanted Input 1, I wanted that to be off, so that is set as per the main routing page. Input 2, for example, input 2, I want to set that to, actually, so we'll do, so we'll do 1 and 2 to auxiliary aux in five and aux in six. That is currently my default location for putting in um, an iPhone signal into two mono jacks, which I use for background music before events start. So I can have that on my first two faders, but then I can have everything else set to the main inputs on the desk. Or I could change those on the fly to be whatever I need them to be. The way that you map the desk is completely up to you. It's, this is a product of the work that they've done with the Behringer Wing and that usability to be able to move stuff around. Although they haven't really shouted about this because it'll mean that people will want to stay with this. So we're just going to set those back because I will forget about them. Um, so we can do that for all 32 channels in the banks of 8 and then we can do that for output as well. If you have made these changes and you want to use them you can go to input and you select 
user and then the bank that you've changed. So there's almost limitless opportunities to route this how you would like to route it. And it's very powerful and it is usually the first thing that scuppers anybody using this desk.